Yes, my father came to Leicester uh, University College, as it then was, when I think there was uh, something like uh, 120 undergraduates. I mean, that's all. And Leicester has a very distinguished record when you look back on it. It was philanthropic, enlightened, generous-spirited, public-spirited citizens of Leicester who decided uh, that Leicester should have a university college. Uh, it wasn't the government, it wasn't uh, laid down by fiat from Westminster or anything, it was Leicester people. I lived in what was then called College House, which was the resident of the man who ran the, uni the university college, the principal as he was called, and so we had a big garden. And I was also next door to Victoria Park, so uh, I, I ran around there. But mostly, one got on a bicycle and just bicycled out of the city. Now. I don't know how far you have to bicycle from College House and Victoria Park to see a good, nice Hawthorne hedge these days. But certainly I could do that when I was eight or nine, and did, and watch foxes and uh, grass snakes and uh, great crested newts and dragonflies. You mentioned your two brothers. Did you spend an awful lot of time together? Because obviously in, in career terms, you've all gone in very different directions. Did you share the same interests as children? Well, we hit one another, you know, uh, in the <laughs> way that brothers do. <laughs> And we obviously lived in the same place and saw quite a lot of one another. But, uh, but we had different friends. I, I mean, when you're 10 or something, or 12, you don't mix with boys of 15. So I didn't see much of my brother's friends, or he of mine. Uh, and he was uh, absolutely dedicated actor. I mean, he, all he wanted was the theatre. And the little theatre, which was, uh, well, and probably still is, mm -hmm. a very distinguished uh, amateur theatre, um, was one of the focus of his life, far more than anything else. I mean, far more than school or university or anything else. Did you get dragged along to see shows at all? Oh, all the time, yeah. yeah. And um, and indeed dragged in to take part. I mean, uh, and Dick was, uh, was a good actor at school. He was a good actor in the, in the little theatre. But as I say, I was more likely to be uh, on my bicycle uh, looking for dragonflies and fossils than, than in the backstage in the little theatre. So when did your involvement with the BBC begin in terms of uh, making television programmes and, and so on? Because eventually you, you went on and become controller of BBC Two, didn't you? <laughs> I thought I was going to be a scientist and wanted to be a scientist and so took my degree, but that was during the war, just at the end of the war. And then I had to get the silk inscription, so I went into the Navy. And when I came out of the Navy, I couldn't bring myself to go back to a laboratory. I wanted to be out there, you know, I, I wanted to watch elephants. And, uh, and in those days, watching elephants wasn't science. That was something you did if you were a big game hunter and writing letters in the Times. So I decided not to take an academic career. And I thought I would go into publishing since I had a science degree. I thought science publishing would be OK. And I did that for a couple of years and then answered an advertisement in The Times for a job in the BBC, which was a radio job, in fact, which, which I was immediately turned down. And then a month or so later, I got a letter from someone saying, uh, we're, we're just starting, we've got a new thing going called television, and uh, people are very rude about it, And uh, you know, but we think you know, if we persevere, something worthwhile might come out of it. I mean, would you like to join us as a trainee? I said, no, certainly not. I mean, who wants to join a flippity gibbet fly-by-night organisation like television? Good heavens. But they were very persuasive. So I joined in 1952. 